Welcome back to Myths, Legends, and Truths. I'm your host, Ari, and today I'm flying solo with a story of my own. I'd say this story started back hmm, maybe about six, seven years ago. Uh, Just think about if you ever had that feeling that someone was watching you. um, Kind of that change when you're sitting in a room by yourself and someone else walks into it unexpectedly. It's just something about the silence, the sound, something changes. I I don't know quite how to explain it, but uh, the reason I mention it is because I'm a healthcare worker and I've gone to many patients' houses to provide treatment. And I remember this one patient in particular. Um, she must have been in her late 90s. Um, she lived in a house that was originally built basically by her husband. Um, her husband was a woodworker, um, carpenter, and he built so many things in that home so many pieces of furniture I mean there was there was just so much from him still kind of embedded in that home Um, unfortunately physically he wasn't with us he's no he's no longer alive she was she was a widow living in that home by herself and I remember going in there to work with her very nice lady Um, and sometimes I'd just be sitting there and I would see someone, someone else in the corner of my eye, a shadow figure with a a hat. Um, I kind of got the feeling that it was her husband, you know, that was still there watching over her. I never mentioned it to her. I never discussed it you know with her she she just other than the pieces of furniture that he made and um you know how how much that he had put into that house that was about the extent of you know our conversations about him which were you know just very minimal um it it was just interesting I think that was the first time in someone else's home like that Um, you know, where I was working that I felt, you know, that I kind of noticed something like that. It just seemed like, it. I know it was just the two of us. She lived alone. Um, But, you know, at times you would just kind of see like that figure, you know, in the corner of your eye. Well, anyway, um, I visited a lot of people's houses. Um... But I started noticing that in our own home, things were kind of happening. Weird things, unexplainable things started happening. I would say when we first moved into, we bought our home. We're not the original owners of the home. I believe the home had two maybe uh, owners in the past or uh, possibly one owner that rented out. Uh, to others, um, college students mainly. We live in a college town. Um, but when we first moved into the house, I didn't feel anything odd. Um, now to kind of shed some light on my background, um, I think I've I've always been kind of sensitive to these things. I think everyone has this just innate ability to to sense, you know, things. Um, like that sixth sense, like they say. I think just, you know, some people it's it's just clearer for, for others. Um and you know when I came into this home, you know, I, I didn't feel anything but, you know, peace. There was it wasn't anything, you know, eerie feelings or anything. But 
going into so many people's homes, um, you just never know what you're going to bring back with you. Um, And so, yeah, things did kind of start happening around the house. Um, uh, I started having trouble sleeping. Um, A lot of nightmares, a lot of sleep paralysis um, that seems to be happening consistently over almost almost every night, I'd say. Um, There was one instance that I tried to explain... Because I, I, I think overall I'm I'm a level-headed person. Um, I don't just jump to the conclusion, oh, it's, you know, supernatural, it's a ghost. It's No, I, I try to kind of figure it out in my head. Okay, what's the possibility? Could have, you know, could it have been this, that, or the other? And I remember specifically one day um, I was sitting at the table and so we have a dining room and we also have a table in you know our eden our eden kitchen and in our eden kitchen as well as um uh, our living room area we have these three large glass sliding doors that you can see directly into the backyard at that time um we had two hammocks um, so we just kind of think of there were three trees, and the middle tree was a little further back than the other two. Um, so we had the two hammocks, and in the middle tree, both hammocks, you know, joined and were hanging from that middle tree. Just kind of think of almost kind of like a V shape, and It was a clear day, and in one of the hammocks, it almost looked like there was somebody in it. You know, you know the difference between an empty hammock and, you know, a weighted one with, you know, someone's body in there. And they're both the same. We bought the hammocks at the same time. They're from the same company, same material, same everything. And the one that looked like had a body inside was just swaying, you know, like you would when you're in the hammock, just kind of swaying from side to side. And, um, you know, I just kind of thought to myself, "Uh, hmm, is it windy outside? Um, What can possibly give it that shape? Because the other one, was not shaped that way and the other one was not swaying like the other one was like the weighted one what seemed like the weighted one was um so it did grab my attention um i was looking at it i did not open the door to go outside and investigate um but i was just kind of sitting there just trying to make sense of it in my head and then you know all of a sudden it just it was gone like it was back to normal like the other one like if nobody was there you know it literally the shape the movement of it and everything changed it's just it's the oddest thing but it looked like someone was in it swinging side to side and the other one was not I thought that was pretty creepy and you know right around the time of course I was having issues sleeping and um the way our bed was positioned uh it was facing our master bathroom and I was sleeping on the left side of the bed and there was this one area of the room that I kept focusing on. It was on the left side, basically the left you know, corner of the wall. And for whatever reason, every time I would walk into the room or every time you know, 
I was laying in bed. It's like I was always drawn to that corner and not in a good way, just kind of like that uneasy feeling, you know, that feeling that you get when someone's staring at you. It it was just was not a good feeling. And, you know, but I didn't see anything there. My husband didn't see anything there. It, you know, it's just the corner of a wall. It's just the corner. It just, I don't know. It just wasn't making sense. And I think, you know, I felt little by little with, you know, the lack of sleep, the sleep paralysis and everything. I just kind of felt like I was losing my mind. You know, just something was off. Something was wrong. You know, I don't know if it was just, you know, maybe, I don't know, something going on in my body, maybe a hormonal shift. I was feeling so much anxiety, so much anxiety, so much fear, so much sadness, just a roller coaster of emotions that you know, weren't there. They just seemed to manifest overnight along with all these strange happenings in the house. Um, I would just randomly wake up in the middle of the night because of a nightmare or, you know, because I felt like someone was tugging at my toes. Um, That sensation of just floating up off of the bed and all of a sudden falling and landing, you know, on the bed. It was just, you know, that sensation. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had that sensation kind of, you know, when you're in between that state of, you know, halfway asleep, halfway awake, and you just feel like you fell, but you're still laying in bed. You know, it just, it it was that that kind of sensation, but it was happening so much, you know, every night throughout the night and the sleep paralysis, the sleep paralysis is, you know, the most terrifying part, being able, not being able, not being able to move, you know, you just open your eyes and you feel like your mind is playing tricks on you, like you're seeing things, you know, and you just can't move. You just can't get up. You feel like you're under attack of some sort and you can't you can't do anything but watch. And I I could I couldn't even scream. I think it was they say some people can scream, you know, when they're when they have the sleep paralysis episodes. I couldn't scream. It's just everything was paralyzed. You know, the most I could do was maybe like a little groan, like a moan groan kind of thing. Um, And I think the scariest part was one night when I was sleeping and I felt like someone's breath on my left ear. Um, like someone just whispering into my ear, but you know when they get so close and you literally feel their breath. And it was a male voice, it was a man. And it said, you're going to die in 10 years. And that was it. And so at that time, you know, I was 35. I'm 41 now. You know, and it was just the craziest thing. It was just so random, so out of nowhere. Um, And again, I, you know, I really felt like I was losing my mind. So, you know, these things kind of keep happening. And emotionally, I was really struggling to the point you know that i i even brought it up to to my physician and and told them hey you know i i don't i'm having so much anxiety there's just a roller coaster of emotions you know i can't control it i don't know what's going on i don't know what's happening and at one point 
it's like my kids started complaining of, you know, things also. Um, They usually don't have problems sleeping. You know, they would sleep in their room with the lights off. And all of a sudden, you know, my youngest one is scared in his room. Um, talking about seeing someone and my oldest one is is saying that sometimes he would be in the house by himself and he would hear a woman screaming another time you know he was here with his friends and he him and his friend claimed that that they heard a scream or some sort of a voice um at one point we actually called the sheriff's department because my oldest one said that he saw a man in our home running across the dining room. And we didn't see anyone. Um, we didn't hear any doors opening and closing. And it, you know, but just to be sure, you never know. We, we do have a good size home. So someone could potentially run through and maybe go into one of the guest rooms or something and hide. I don't know. It sounds crazy, but I know a lot of crazy things have happened. And so, you know, we just wanted to play it safe and we called the sheriff's department and all these police officers showed up. They showed up with dogs and everything. And they were, you know, going through every room of our home with the dogs all around the perimeter up into our attic. I mean, there was there was just so much activity and you know, it, it it made me nervous and you know, kind of embarrassed at the same time. You know, I'm thinking, "Oh my gosh, we have all these cops here. What are the neighbors going to think?" Um, but, you know, thank goodness the house was clear. They didn't they didn't find anyone in the home. Um, another instance, my son had came downstairs uh, to the kitchen. And once you get down the stairs, you'll make a right and you'll walk directly through our dining room to get to the kitchen. Or you can walk around the back part of the stairs through our family room and get to the kitchen that way. The easiest way is just to make a right and go through our dining room, which our dining room has a light on either end you know it has two light switches you know one side uh one wall and then directly across there's another switch um on the other wall you know they're facing each other across the room so he'll usually just turn on the light on one side get to the kitchen get back through and turn off the light so he um actually at that moment kind of thinking about it now he said he had gone to the kitchen and he turned off the light uh in the dining room and went back upstairs then he went back downstairs a second time because he noticed that the light in the dining room was on which you know he he swore that he had shut it off to begin with so he goes downstairs and he went to shut off the light and then the light just shut off on its own. He was about to walk away and then the light turned on again. And he thought at that point that there was a little glitch or something. And mind you, I mean, he's still, he's still a pretty young kid. He's a, a young teenager. Um, he didn't get scared right away. He just, you know, was curious and went to investigate. Maybe there's a little glitch or something, but he said that when he got close to the light switch and his finger was close to the switch, the switch flipped. And so when he saw that at that point, he screamed and ran upstairs, which of course scared us to death with him screaming up the stairs. Um, And it was really the first time he had ever done that. The first time that we ever saw him so scared um, over, you know, something like that. Something, you know, unexplainable. Um, So 
at that point, I really wasn't, I don't know, I really wasn't thinking of, I just, I don't know, I couldn't figure things out, you know, there was just so much happening, Um, but after that, you know, I did think, okay, maybe, maybe I need to do a spiritual cleaning of some sort, you know, I never really, I've never done that before, Um, that was the first time, and you know, I found myself just like desperately looking for sage, you know, where can I buy sage? Where can I get it now? You know? Um, and, and I drove to a couple different places since with my job, I was always on the road. So just kind of stopped and checked out and see where I can find it. And I found the store and bought two bundles. I said, let's just be sure we're going to get these two bundles. Um, And I just looked up, you know, kind of Googled (laughs) how to cleanse, how to spiritually cleanse your home. And, you know, I saw a couple simple, um, just, you know, short prayers uh, to recite as you're going throughout the house and, and cleaning the house spiritually. And I'm, I don't quite recall the time frame. I think sometime while I had that job that I was going from place to place, but before the time that it got really bad, um, some of my husband's family members came to visit. And one of them... Um, wanted to, you know, bless the house and just kind of its, you know, tradition. Um, here, you know, are some small prayers and everything of good luck to put, you know, around the house and let's go around the house and sprinkle some holy water, you know, in every corner and go with a candle to every room and just say a prayer. And the craziest thing was, you know, we would walk into one room and she would, you know, she would start the prayer and the light from the candle will blow out. Okay, we light it up again. You know, go to the next room. You know, start the prayer and then the, the light from the candle will go out again. And that, you know, it happens a couple times, you know, and I I tried to look around and think, okay, are we standing under a vent? Um, Our AC at that time, you know, was old. It was original to the house. It was over like 15 years old. More than that, it was time to get it changed. So it wasn't working properly. It it really wasn't. um, So it wasn't the vents, but, you know, for sure, I was also making sure that we weren't standing under the vents anyway. So I couldn't explain exactly why the fire from, you know, the candle kept blowing out. But, you know, we just continued and, you know, continue to start the prayer and relight the candle and keep going through all the rooms. Well, moving forward, back again to where things had escalated and I just felt like there was so much you know happening in the house and so much happening you know within me that we I I did the cleaning one day there was nobody in the house my husband was at work um my kids were in school um so I went ahead and opened up all the windows of the house according to you know some of the guidelines of cleaning your home you should open the windows to allow any negative energy uh to just go right out the window instead of still getting trapped in the house um making sure that you're going to every corner of the room as you're saying the prayer um you know optional you can have a feather or something to guide the smoke in the direction you know that you want and so I did that every corner of the room reciting the prayer with the low feather just kind of guiding the smoke 
you know, I, I felt ridiculous in the beginning. Um, but as I reached the second floor and got closer to our bedroom, I started getting scared. I mean, I was terrified in the house by myself, you know, that this heavy, heavy feeling. My hands were shaking. I was scared. And I walked into the room and we have we have a dresser. We had a dresser. We rearranged our room and everything since then. We had a dresser next to that particular corner that I kept getting getting that eerie feeling from at night. And there was some stuff on the dresser. And as soon as I got to that corner of the room and started reciting the the, the prayer, you know, with the sage, the stuff that was on the dresser just flew off of the dresser. I'd never seen, you know, anything like that before. You know, I experienced that for myself. Um, yes, I was scared. No, I didn't run. I just kind of stopped in my tracks. And, you know, I just thought to myself, I just have to push through this, you know, and just keep going. And my intention was to get rid of any negative energy in our home. Um, anything that, you know, wasn't suiting or supporting, you know, me and my family. I, you know, I wanted things to be better. I wanted that our atmosphere and everything to feel lighter like it used to be. And that didn't exactly happen at that moment with the cleansing. And I felt like you know, I had I had to talk to someone else. Well, at that time, I wanted to, I'm kind of, you know, I'm an introvert and <laughs> we were still kind of settling into the neighborhood and I, I wanted to meet more people in the area. You know, we had moved from a, you know, completely different state from the north to the south, um, you know, very big change from, you know, a big city to the suburbs in the South. And I wanted to get to know more people. So I joined like uh, a woman's, a women's uh, breakfast club. You know, they would meet up once a month uh, to have brunch and just get to know, you know, other women in, in the community, in the area. So I figured that would be a great way to get to know other people. And in that group, um, there was a woman there. Um, you know, she she had special abilities um, where she can sense, you know, spirits, entities, and she read tar- tarot cards. And, um, you know, she, she had a wide array of, you know, experiences. Um, so I decided to call her. And I, you know, I was like, you're going to think that I'm crazy. Um, You know, we just met and and I'm reaching out, you know, with this. But, you know, I I was kind of desperate. I really felt like I I needed help. And, you know, to where I felt like I was going crazy. And then that point, you know, when my son, my son went through that, my kids went through that, um, you know, it kind of hit home. Okay, maybe I'm not completely crazy. Something... (laughs) Something's going on here. So um, I asked her to come over, and she did. And um, when I saw her car pull up, um, I went ahead and, you know, I saw her just kind of standing in the driveway looking up towards, you know, the second floor. And so our home, I guess the best way to explain it, it's kind of shaped like an L, you know, you have the front side of the house and to the side, it kind of wraps around like an L shape and you have the garage and everything. Now, the front side of the house on the second floor, you can to the right, you can see, um, 
two windows from our master bathroom. And so I just see her standing and just staring up to the second floor. So when I opened the door, you know, to welcome her in, the first thing she did was ask, is there someone on the second floor of the house? Because originally I told her that, you know, it was just going to be me and her. You know, the boys, uh, my husband and my kids were not going to be in the house at that time. Um, I told her no. And I said, you know, that's that's our bedroom. Those are the windows for our bedroom. And, you know, that's exactly, you know, the area um, where I felt that there was a lot of activity or something going on there. And so the crazy thing is, you know, she starts to do a reading and not crazy, but she starts to do a reading and um, just kind of feeling the energy. And she said that there was a woman there, like a female spirit, that was trying to protect us. And that there was more than one entity in the home, most likely followed. Um, you know, some of them followed me from from work from other people's houses. And others were sent as well we'll skip to that later Um, but there was more than one entity in the home that she sensed and that there was this one woman female spirit in the house that was trying to protect us I couldn't figure out who this female spirit was I said who who I don't know any women close to me that have passed, you know, that would be so close that would be here trying to defend me, you know, is this some sort of guardian angel? I, I don't know. And then she said, you know, there's there's two women behind what's going on right now. So it seems like almost um like if someone sent, you know, these entities to our home to, you know, just out of malicious intent, um, out of, you know, dislike and jealousy. And um, it, it just, you know, it was, it was scary to think that someone would wish us that much harm, that they would dabble in, you know, black magic to send something our way. And I, I just, you know, it, it just, it boggled my mind. You know, we're, we're, we're good people. I mean, we haven't offended anyone. We haven't, I, I just couldn't understand. But, um, you know, we were humble. We came from very simple, humble beginnings. And, you know, through working hard and sacrifice, we we accomplish so much. So I can see where, you know, to some, you know, that that might be seen as a threat. But it, it was just it was just crazy. Well, um, you know, she said, say these prayers. Um, there was a piece of candle that she had gotten um, from Mexico, from a church in Mexico uh, she just kind of took a piece of the melted wax there and she kept it, you know, for protection and things like that. And since when she was digging in her bag, it just kind of fell out. You know, she took it kind of as a sign of, you know, here, this is this is something for you for protection. And, you know, she gave me some tips on some things to do um, to help protect you know, our family and offered to do, you know, a spiritual cleansing. We just couldn't get it done, you know, that very same day. Well, none of this made sense. You know, I didn't know what to do with that information. It really just did not make sense to me. And I I didn't do anything crazy. I just, you know, I followed 
what she said. You know, I said the prayers um, that she told me to to recite at night. You know, I continue to to cleanse um, the house with sage and everything every so often. Um, because also one thing that I forgot to mention was that every time I would lie down to go to sleep, you know, I was attempting to say a prayer and for whatever reason, I just could not finish the prayer. It was just the craziest thing. I just couldn't finish the prayer. And, you know, I told her that and she said, just keep pushing through it. Just keep pushing through it. You know, keep this holy water next to you. Um, Keep this, um, you know, the piece of candle she gave me next to you. Um, And I'd say within a week, I noticed in the bottle of holy water, um, there was like some sort of buildup inside. It, it, the best way, and this is kind of gross, but the best way that I can describe it was, you know, like phlegm. Like it looked like phlegm that somebody just harked up and just spat into the bottle. It was just this weird overgrowth. And at the time that that happened, the piece of candle that she had given me for protection just disappeared. I, I couldn't find it anywhere, you know, and we had rearranged the, mo- the room and we moved furniture around and did all this stuff. And I never found that piece of candle again. It just disappeared. Um, you know, and I, of course, I threw out the bottle with the stuff growing inside. You know, I didn't think it was anything good. I'd never seen, you know, holy water do that. You know, it's just it's just water. You know, have you ever seen a build up of phlegm just, you know, f- building up in the water and just floating there? It was so I I kind of took it as you know maybe it just absorbs some type of negative energy and I need to get rid of it. But you know, after several weeks, things started to get better. Um, I wasn't having the sleep paralysis or anything anymore. Um, Things just seemed to spontaneously get better after, I don't know how long, months and months of just crazy things happening and all these horrible feelings. Like I felt, you know, like I was getting back to normal. Now fast forward and a year, you know, down the line, um, <laughs> my husband, um, you know, he has, we have a relative, you know, that contacted and, you know, he was talking to her and, um, <laughs> this woman, <laughs> I don't even know how to go about explaining this. Um, she calls and she asks, you know, Hey, is everything better in the house now? You know, it was it was a year down the road. He's like, what are you talking about? She said, well, you know, about a year ago, I had a dream, you know, and I saw your wife going around the home and um, trying to cleanse the house with sage. And she said it, it wasn't enough. You know, I saw her, you know, kind of struggling and I saw her trying to clean, trying to cleanse the house. And, you know, what she was doing was not enough. She said that she saw a couple, I don't know, two, maybe three entities there. And she described the inside of our home to a T. Mind you, she had never set foot in our home. Um, and, you know, we've had pictures taken, yeah, of outside the home in certain rooms, but never to the detail that she went, you know, the details of our children's rooms, our bedrooms. It it was just, you know, I didn't know how to explain it. It was almost like she had walked through the house herself. Well, she claimed that, you know, she meditates and she astral projected herself into our home to just wage war on these spirits that were tormenting us had a spiritual battle in our home to cleanse it and all of a sudden it just kind of made sense this is the woman 
that my friend saw that was in our home protecting us, fighting off these spirits. I mean, this was a year, over a year, I hadn't thought about that. And all of a sudden, it's like all the pieces just kind of fell into place. That makes sense now, you know, because I didn't know of anyone that had passed, anyone that was close to us that had passed and that would, you know, protect us in such a way. And, you know, lo and behold, she's alive and well. Um... She claims that she astral projected and had this spiritual war and that she cleansed our home. And then she just decided to call and ask us, hey, how's everything going? You know, is everything in your house okay? Because I noticed that you guys were suffering and that something was happening. And I saw it. I saw what they were. And they were, you know, very bad, very malicious, very negative, but I took care of it for you. And she sent them, said, supposedly sent them right back to the people that had unleashed them originally. Again, this is like crazy and this would make probably a great horror movie a great thriller <laughs> but um this it, it's just it's just insane um but that's my story um that's exactly how i remember it that's exactly you know just everything that that i felt everything that we went through it was just you know months and months of just all these unexplainable things it it it, it was just so much it, it almost it was so overwhelming and you know the outcome you know how everything resolved it was just all so unexpected completely unexpected but that's my story would love to hear some of your comments read some of your comments and stay tuned you know i i have more way more stories <laughs> more to come <laughs>